Good day, everyone. Uh, it's been a while. I want to say that the reason it's not really true, but is that I was uh, hesitant to do the next one that I have uh, scheduled to read, which is um, I was going through August of 2021. So these these poems are poems I wrote and posted to the Anachronisms blog uh, nearly a year ago. And I was going through, I was going through the month of August. It is currently July the 24th, 2022. This is a poem posted Friday, August the 6th, 2021. It is anachronism number 3,317. And um, it is a very flawed poem and a very long-ish poem, I think. One of those poems, I think maybe there's two, maybe three in this whole set in which I wrote it, posted it, or at least I wrote it. One of, I think in this case, I wrote it and then lost the draft of most of it and then had to recreate it and I, I had a great idea for this piece I thought and lost the draft and then the rest is history I couldn't find the rest of it and I tried to piece it back together uh, very unsuccessfully nevertheless that's that's the nature of the game for these things there are um, if you're writing a poem every day and you're gonna post a poem almost every day and that's your goal and I have come through a series of about a year and a half in which I've done almost exactly that uh, on average I do if I miss a day sometimes I will go back and I'll write a couple poems or whatever to catch up to the end of the month and only to the end of the month where I have to start over again I don't if I don't finish the and I won't write over the amount of days there are in a month within the month and post them in that month but I will catch up with the amount of poems that days that there are in the month and keep posting until I kind of reach that moment um, by the end of the month if possible and it's quite a feat so in this case uh, I had already started a, a successful run I think uh, which started uh, geez it might have been a year ago September when I first really so I'm almost approaching two years of having done that really well um, better than even when I first started and I know I'm going on and on here this is going to be a long piece I suppose so I'll just go ahead and read this saying that it is a flawed piece and I explained the flaw in the beginning I think we'll see again I don't read through these until I read to read them out loud to you and I am today in the middle of a bunch of interviews um, looking for a job again and it is uh, realizing that I have issues with um, communication when it comes to and presentation when it comes to making first impressions and, and, and interviews and, and some of you may find this unbelievable I I know that people think that I have this ten that people, a lot of people seem to think that I'm very easygoing with people and socially um, and that can be true but I have to it, the, the situations around that have to be perfect and I work very hard hard at trying to make that true so therefore in and also I don't I don't have any correspondence with people or I don't have any tete-a-tetes with anybody uh, certainly not in close in actual physical proximity any these days uh, just uh, uh, a certain paramour uh, that lives way away from here uh, at the moment uh, that I speak with most days and you know occasionally my mom who's not doing so, so well uh, so I don't catch her all the time these days or uh, maybe one friend or two that I speak with uh, occasionally but not even on the phone I just do correspondence not like the life I used to have we'll talk about that some other time but I'll just get right into this piece which I entitled takes after his mama and it is a, a fictionalized, a fictional story that I I was writing a lot of narratives, a lot of real fictional pieces in my poetry at this time. And I continue to do that off and on, but not, I was really doing it a lot back, back about a year ago. Uh, starting with a quote, I think, which all of these uh, poems may have this month, particular month. Uh, what keeps, what, what makes everything, what makes the poems from this month have something in common, which is something that also I do lately on occasion. 
uh, is, is have a little theme or something is that they all start out with an epigraph by John Ashbery and this, this epigraph for this one is I think I should stay cross-eyed son of a bitch he liked him he could tell a D happening John Ashbery in brackets a little note out of character this silly little ditty seemed pretty spiffy at around 2 a.m. when I thought it was complete unfortunately however the entire thing reverted back to the original and very rough draft that's what happened I shall repair it after some sleep didn't happen I did maybe look at it briefly and then gave up uh, in parentheses in the brackets another little note inserted into the out of character note a day later <laughs> It really was a pretty great piece after I spent maybe an hour and a half editing it. At least it seemed to me to be, but I don't know, perhaps I will fix it back up in the morning. Uh -uh. In the meantime now, you know that what you see here in the latest, at least these days are works in progress. Emphasis on that for me, just to slowly say, yes, especially now the way that I work, with this blog, I used to poo-poo uh, the notion of editing much, and of course I, I always edited, And but the, I've gotten to the point where I will send a rough draft out and post it, and I try really hard to get the draft at least in some semblance, but occasionally it's not, and I do go back, the biggest problem really is spelling errors and some, some grammatical stuff, which I work on usually within the first week or two or month thereafter but I have been now going back uh, occasionally like when I do right now I'll, if I make a note of it in my head that I got something really wrong in a poem I may go back and fix it, edit it uh, appropriately uh, and these are just spellings grammatical stuff and then stuff that doesn't make any sense or just just any incongruency that I just can't stand In the meantime, now you know that what you see here in the latest, at least these days, are works in progress. Yes, editing. Imagine that. But boy, was I ever miffed. Sigh. Onward and back into character. Ellipses, into brackets, more ellipses, beginning of the meat of the poem here. I don't know quite what to tell you, my friend. I don't know much more than this. You've driven us over the cliff, my good man. We're nothing but one pair of stiffs. I can't yet decide how to end this old chap with a hand grenade or a Russian roulette, perhaps. We've tread upon this very tundra, you fool, at least 10 times since Sunday night. I'd settle this now with a dual stubborn man, but with just a grenade and one pistol. Whatever the case, we'll be dead, it's for sure, by midnight's historic penumbra. We had that one chance with your friend, Gungaden, who offered a ride and some petrol, but you shrugged him off, you dumb jerk. Yes, you did. Our chances right now are abysmal. In the daylight, the sun scorches more than the earth. My skin is one gigantic rash, and get this, I have third-degree burns on my genitals. But at night, oh dear God, it's as cold as a curse. No, it's worse. I can't breathe. And my nose is so chapped, it's, some, it's come all but uncapped. A hiccup or sneeze, heaven help. I would not only be dismal, but death. This is it, I am gone. Jesus wept, Mary swore, look at me out the door. Oh, what luck, fuck a duck, there's a snake. Oh, my gizzard, holy hell, an iguana. Can you spare me some water? I just, just a drop, won't you, Pop? I guess not. You'll just watch while my life drains away just like this. Get a grip, you nitwit. Can't you hear that the train's on its way over there, right to here? Like the plan? Wheels a-chuggin', steam's a-whimperin'. All my life, what luck to have a son so unplugged so much drama, all from his mama. Would she still be here? Will had 
well, he'd uh, never been here with me. And, oh, mama, on our train, which was our favorite, all night long, making whoopee. Now stand, stupid son, this drama's over, and I'll have earplugs in those ears before supper's toast and cheer. Good grieving God, you are one fried up hobgoblin of drama, I do swear. Now you can see how I think, uh, well, I mean, I feel like there's so much not really explored in this, and, and, and let me tell you, there was a draft. <laughs> there was a draft in which I think that it's sort of, um, I mean, the cadences are kind of interesting and fun, but, like, it doesn't really tell anything except for this story about a, a story with lots of stories that we don't hear, you know, about a kid that a dad doesn't like. You know, just, just, a, just there's a problematic uh, father-son relationship, and that's just about it. And it's not satisfa satisfactory. It doesn't give you any content toward the end. Not that it should. Except that, um, there you have it. What photo did I put in here? Oh, this is a uh, long uh, lost, or not lost, but a very long, a relative of mine. Or I don't even know that he was, I think, yeah, he's definitely a relative. I believe his last name is McClary, John D. McClary, maybe. Um, this, this came from my, my grandmother's photos, um, which my, I've been working with my mom to try to figure out, and which you can see this, a lot of them strung behind me. These are all my four forefathers and foremothers kind of like looking over me as I sleep, which is, as you might imagine, it's not exactly the, it, it's so, every once in a while I start to get a little bit disturbed, or used to, I'm, nowadays I'm used to it, but like it was kind of a funny idea at first, and then it was a weird idea, kind of creepy one, and now I still like the fact that they're, that they're up. A lot of, lot of extracurricular stuff for this one, but uh, I, I'm just now getting back into the groove of, of reading you some poems. I hope to finish the month, hopefully today or soon, so that I can get these poems up. And there's, I think, two months of poems I need to put up. Thanks.